Welcome to your first clarinet lesson. You're probably anxious to get going, so let's get started. We're going to start with the case. So it's really interesting. Uh, you might think how easy it is to open the case, but you might be also surprised how many end up dropping all the parts out just because they don't know how it opens. So your case has latches, and the latches are going to open up. And we're always going to start with the case on the ground. So go ahead and put it on the floor with me. And let's open your case, and let's talk about the parts of the instrument first. Okay, we'll start with the bottom of the clarinet, and that's this one right here. So this is called the bell, and when we put it together in just a minute, we'll start with this piece. Okay. As we work up from there, this is the bottom joint, or the lower joint. This is the one where our right hand will go eventually. And this is the upper joint, or the top joint. And our left hand will go on this one eventually. Just a couple things to note on this one. The two uh, joints connect to each other. And so this little key right here that I'm moving up and down is called the bridge key. And when we assemble it, we'll be careful to make sure those line up together. I'll show you how to do that a little more specifically later. If we keep going, then we get our barrel, okay. and then lastly, we get our mouthpiece, and this is what the reed will go on. And the thing that holds the reed on is called the ligature. It's probably metal in your case, just like mine. And then lastly, you have a reed. Now, while we put things together, when you do this on your own, you can be soaking your reed while you do that. And we soak the whole reed, so not just the top of the reed, but after a while, turn it around, and you'll also soak the bottom of the reed. So, um, you can be doing that if you want to. I'm going to put mine down for now. Before we uh, put it together, we're going to put on some cork grease around the corks on each piece so that they go together easily. You don't have to use cork grease every time, but you should use it maybe once a month or um, just if you feel like it's hard to put things together. Um, if you don't use cork grease, these can rip over time and break and then you just have to get them replaced. So in your case, it should have some cork grease there. It might look kind of like a uh, chapstick. So we're going to take a little bit of that. And I'm going to start with my bottom joint. And I'm just going to put a little bit of cork grease on like so. It just takes a little bit. And then we'll rub it in with our fingers. And let's do that with each of our corks. So the top joint has a cork on both ends. Just put a little bit on and then rub it in with your fingers. It is possible to put too much cork grease on and that's why we don't do it every day. And so if, if you get too much on then the pieces are also kind of hard to get together. Um, and you just kind of have to wipe, wipe off the excess cork grease. And then lastly, I'll put some on my mouthpiece. All right, we are going to start um, our first notes with just our mouthpiece, our reed, our ligature, and our barrel. And so find your mouthpiece and your barrel, and let's put those together. And then also find your ligature, and you can go ahead and put the ligature on. Now, uh, yours probably have two, two screws, and the screws always tighten with your right hand. And that's true for me, and it's true for you. 
Now you'll notice something different about my ligature probably than yours. Notice that my screws, in order for me to tighten with my right hand, my screws are on the back of the mouthpiece. So here's the front with the hole and the opening. Yours probably will look more like this. Mine won't quite go on the whole way. Yours will probably uh, have the screws on the front of the mouthpiece. This ligature that I'm using is called an inverted ligature. And so the screws are on the back. But the rule to remember is you always tighten with your right hand. So we'll put the, the ligature on, the mouthpiece on. We're missing our reed. So this won't make any sound yet. We need our reed. So go ahead and find your reed. It should be moist. Um, you don't need to soak it in water a bunch. Just putting it in your mouth while you're assembling your clarinet is probably enough to get your reed um, soaked. And I like to do both ends. Then we're going to uh, just insert the reed um, top down through the ligature. So I raise the ligature up a little bit to make some room. And then I'll put the reed in place. So that the top of the reed and the top of the mouthpiece are the same height. Notice that I also like to have some bark showing above the ligature and some bark showing below. And then I'm going to tighten my screws just so they're snug. I don't have to crank them down really hard, but just so they're snug. It is possible to break your ligature if you tighten them really super hard. Um, so just snug, and that's kind of what it should look like. So the reed is at the top of the mouthpiece. So we're going to start with just this much of the clarinet. And the first note we're going to learn, if we were to play this, it lines up with an F sharp on the piano. So concert F sharp. So the way we form our embouchure is we're going to do this in three steps. So we're going to put our top teeth on the mouthpiece and our bottom lip over our bottom teeth. And then our corners are going to come in together as if we were just pulling a bag of marbles, like a drawstring of marbles. We're just going to bring our corners right around that mouthpiece. So top teeth, bottom lip, and drawstring corners. And we're going to play, just take a big breath and see what comes out. It's a pretty high note. And that's an F sharp on the piano, around, around an F sharp. If it's not perfectly with your tuner, that's okay. Um, but it should be kind of around there. So let's try it together. So we're going to just put the, the mouthpiece in, top teeth on top, bottom lip, drawstring corners, and a big breath. Now, a couple of things could have happened if it didn't work for you. This might have happened. You might have put the mouthpiece in and taken a big breath and nothing came out like this. The only problem here is that I don't have enough mouthpiece in, in my mouth. So if you only have a little bit in, when you go to take, play the note, it stops the reed. It closes the reed off and no sound will come out. So if nothing happened, just put a little bit more into the mouth, okay? Um, if you hold up the reed to the light and you look in between the reed and your mouthpiece, at some point the reed and the mouthpiece come together and touch. So that's about right here. We call that the fulcrum. If you were to imagine like a teeter-totter, the point at the middle of the teeter-totter is called the fulcrum. And that's what's happening here with the reed and the mouthpiece when they come together. Your bottom lip, if your bottom lip is above the fulcrum, it won't play. You're stopping the reed too much. And if it's uh, too far down below the fulcrum, it'll get a really loud high pitched squeak, okay? Which might have also happened. Let's see if that happens. Yep, high pitched squeak. So I went too far in. So there's kind of a sweet spot in here. 
to find that note, okay? And that's an F sharp uh, if you're to play it along with a piano or with your tuner. So let's play a game together. This is called Marathon. And the goal of the game is to take a big breath and to see if we can just hold that high F sharp until we're out of air. Why don't you try it with me? Let's take a, a deep breath together. Top teeth on top, bottom lip, drawstring corners, and here we go. How'd you do? Did you go longer than I went? Or shorter? Uh, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Notice when I breathe, my shoulders stay relaxed and I expand from, from down here and it's just a nice relaxed breath. If you'll sit off of the back of your chair, um, that will help. Okay, so let's take another nice deep breath and play marathon. Great. So play this game this week and you might get a friend to start a stopwatch and actually start to track how many seconds you can go. And we'll play this again in our, in our next lesson just to see if we can hold that note a little bit longer. Okay. How about one more game? And let's see if we can go just a little bit, a little bit longer and hold that note even more steady. Uh, other times, if it's not coming out for you, we talked about maybe you, you have uh, too little mouthpiece in the mouth. It also could be that your angle is too close. So if your uh, clarinet is coming in too far like that, that will also stop the reed from playing. And if it's too far out like this, it might be hard to get that clear sound that we want on the up sharp. So the angle right here, is about a 45 degree angle, okay? And uh, we'll do this game several times and maybe even for several weeks just to try to really get a solid sound on just the barrel and mouthpiece and to build up our breath support, to hold that out. Um, you know, a good goal would be like 15 to 20 seconds as you work on this, okay? We're gonna do uh, something else before we put the whole clarinet together and that's to talk about articulation and tonguing. So when we uh, play music on the clarinet, we will typically tongue at the beginning of each note. And uh, so the part of the tongue we'll use is the tip of our tongue, and we'll touch it to the tip of the reed. So I want you to try this. Take your fingernail, and I want you to find the tip of your tongue. You should kind of feel that sharp edge right at the tip of your tongue. Now, put the clarinet in your mouth, and I want you to find the edge of the reed with your tongue. It should feel kind of like your fingernail. When you think you've found it, go ahead and show it to me like this. So that's the part of the tongue that I'm using against the reed, all right? And we're gonna think that we're saying the word lee, 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 lee. So using an L syllable, and an E vowel, we're just gonna lightly brush the end of that reed. So to practice this, we're gonna start like marathon. We're just gonna sustain that F sharp, and then we're gonna brush the, the, the reed um, just with quarter notes, I'll, just like this. So my air doesn't stop. I'm just blowing like I did with Marathon, but my tongue is just brushing the reed. And I'm, I'm trying to just use one taste bud, one taste bud of skin on, of my tongue on the reed, so I can just barely touch it. And I'm just trying to barely touch the end of the reed. 
So um, you might ask yourself, where are you feeling your tongue touch the reed? We want to avoid touching down here. And I'm not really touching at the top to where I'm closing off the hole. So I'm not really feeling the mouthpiece either. So I'm just trying to lightly brush the tip of that reed. Let's try it again. I'm going to play four quarter notes and then you mimic. Turn again. Good. I'm going to do a different rhythm. Different rhythm. Things to watch out for, when you tongue, your embouchure and your jaw shouldn't move. They should just be nice and still. So it's only the tip of the tongue that's moving. Um, you might get in front of a mirror to try this out. And as you tongue, all of this should just be nice and still. Another thing you might watch for is that your throat doesn't move. And you can use the mirror, or you can also just take your left hand and put it underneath near your throat. Do the same thing, and you shouldn't feel this bounce up and down much. You might feel it move a little bit, but it shouldn't do much. Yeah, go ahead and give that a try. So we've learned uh, about embouchure, we've learned about breathing, we've learned about holding a steady note, and we've learned a little bit about articulation and how to tongue on the reed. Let's go ahead and put the rest of the clarinet together. So you can just set this aside for now. And let's find our bell. And our bottom joint. So for this one, I'm going to have you take the uh, bottom joint in your left hand and the bell in your right hand. And we want to avoid um, gripping the clarinet at the keys like this so that we don't bend them. So I'm putting it in my hand uh, where there aren't any keys in the back of it. And uh, we're just going to twist these two together. Since we used cork grease, they should go together pretty easily. And you can also use your body to kind of help push those together. Okay. Now let's get your top joint. And for this one, we're going to keep your lower joint in your left hand and the top joint in your right hand. Notice I'm also holding this one to avoid touching too many keys. But I am going to put my thumb down on one of these keys so that I can move that bridge key up and down. See that key moving there, right here, by the cork? We want that to be up. We want that bridge key to be up when we put these two pieces together. And it's going to come in on top of the bridge key on this part. So again, I can kind of use my body to help push those together. And we're going to twist them so that that bridge key lines up. Then our mouthpiece and barrel are already put together, so um, we can just take those next. And we're going to put the reed, we're going to line the reed up with our register key. This long key right above our thumb hole. That's what we're going to line our reed up with. So we put those together like that. And your clarinet might have little labels of its brand on the barrel, the top joint, and the bell. And those are all meant to line up to kind of remind you how those, how those go together. Okay. So just to review, we have the bell, the bottom joint, the top joint, the barrel, the mouthpiece, the reed, 
and the ligature that we tighten with our right hand. Okay. And now we're ready to learn how to hold this. So we're going to start with our right hand. And on the back of the clarinet is, is what we call the thumb rest. And we're going to put our thumb right underneath that thumb rest. And with the goal being that we put the thumb rest in between the knuckle and our nail. So this would be too far. This would probably be not far enough. And you might get some pain in here if, if it's not in the right spot. So in between the knuckle and the nail. And that way our right hand is free to be curved and ready to hit these keys. We actually won't need these keys today. Um, so you can just make sure your thumb's in the right place. Okay. Our left hand, we're, the first note we're going to learn is an E on the clarinet. And it's fingered by fingering the thumb and the first finger. So your thumb just goes on the thumb hole. And imagine a clock for a minute. And if the register key was 12 o'clock, we're going to point our thumb to around 2 o'clock. So not straight up at 12 o'clock, and not to the side like 3 o'clock, but kind of diagonal where it's 2 o'clock. And then we're going to put our first finger on the first hole. Okay? And this is going to be an E. So let's uh, try this again with marathon, right? So uh, just like we did with our embouchure and our air, um, everything we did to get that F sharp out should help us to get an E out right here. So go ahead and take your setup. And let's try marathon on E. Great, just some reminders. If the clarinet is too close to your body like this, it might not come out. The reed might not be able to vibrate. And if it's too far out like this, it might not sound right to you and it might squeak. Uh, just a reminder on how much reed to take in your mouth. If you take too much, you'll get a squeak on the open G, and maybe that happened. Um, try this. If I have too much in my mouth, it squeaks. If I don't have enough in my mouth, nothing happens. So let's try that E one more time, and let's see if we can find that sweet spot. So in addition to practicing with just the barrel and mouthpiece this week, um, also try marathon on these three notes that we're going to learn today. So E is our first one. Uh, our next note we're going to learn is D. D is in dog. So we're going to just add a finger right here. So thumb, one, two, and that's D. Go ahead and try it with me. C. We're going to add one more finger. You'll notice this hole is different. It doesn't have a ring around it. Okay, but that's where our third finger goes, and this is C. Thumb, one, two, three. For C. Great. Let's try all those one more time. So, what was this one called? E. Okay. Great, let's add another finger. Remember what this one was? D. And then finally, one more gives us a C. Great. So that time we took a new breath for every note. This time what I want you to try is we're going to take a big breath and we're going to sustain our air but add a finger. So when we move our fingers and we don't use our tongue to brush the reed, 
This is called slurring. And so we're going to slur between E, D, and C, all right? And just for us, uh, so we can do this together, let's do each of these in half notes. So two counts per note, okay? One, two, ready? <laughs> Let's try it one more time just for practice, okay? Still in half notes. We're back on E. Okay, one, two, there. Great job. Now, let's try a little bit of tonguing with this, okay? So remember that we're going to sustain a note and then just Lightly brush the reed with the tip of our tongue and pretend you're using just one taste bud, all right? Just for a nice legato articulation. And we're going to think that the, the word lee. Lee, 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 lee. And let's do it right on that C. Okay, here's four Cs. All right. Great, let's try it on a D. Now let's slur one more time from E on down, okay? Ready? Excellent, way to go. So I don't know if you noticed, but we actually played our first tune. That's Hot Cross Buns. We uh, slur from E down to C a couple times, then we tongue some uh, quarter notes on C and some quarter notes on D, and we do the slur one more time. So let's try that whole tune one more time together. We're back up on E, okay? And ready? Let's do one more tune. So, can you think of another tune that uses those same three notes, E, D, and C? Mary Had a Little Lamb is another good one. And I like Mary Had a Little Lamb because we can practice slurring between notes again, but we also get to use our tongue when we get to the repeated notes. So I'll play Mary, and then we'll do it together. So again, it starts on an E. This time we're just going to be all in quarter notes, okay? And one, two, three. Right. This week when you practice, you should do barrel and mouthpiece alone, marathon, and see how long you can hold that high up sharp. You should then try some tonguing out just on the barrel and mouthpiece. Think the term Lee as you do this for a nice legato articulation. Then try hot cross buns and Mary had a little lamb. And we'll try it, we'll see you again in a week. Okay? Let me show you how to take this apart and how to clean it. Um, before we're done today, all right? So the first thing you want to do is um, make sure the reed, you take the reed off and put it in a safe place. You'll notice your reed came in a little plastic guard and those are okay, but they're really more for packaging and shipping. Um, getting a reed case would be better. And they look like this. So mine uh, holds four reeds, and it also has this little carbon insert to help maintain the humidity in the case. I also like it that it has a cap, so my reeds are really safe, okay? Um, so there's lots of brands and, and different types that you can look for. This is a Van Doren one. Daddario would be another good company to look at for a reed case, but I encourage you to get a reed case as soon as you can to keep your reeds safe and they'll last a lot longer for you. So put the reed away. 
Then you can put the ligature down and take the mouthpiece off. So your case should have come with a swab, and you're just going to wipe out the moisture in your mouthpiece. Um, we're not going to pull the swab through the mouthpiece um, like this. So we're not going to do this with our mouthpiece. That can wear them out over time, and then they stop to play as, as well and to play as a tune. So we're just going to dry off the mouthpiece um, like so. But with the rest of the clarinet, we are going to use that swab. And we're going to start at the bell and go um, use the swab through the bell. And you can probably just go through probably two times. And you know, we didn't play a lot today, so there's probably not much to clean out. Um, but it's a good habit to get into to swab your instrument each day. And then you're going to just disassemble backwards from what we did before. So we'll start with the barrel. And then with our top joint, remember how we put it together? Remember this bridge key. We want to be a little bit careful of that. So we're going to put this uh, top joint in our left hand so we can push this key down. And then we're just going to untwist that top joint off and put it in its case. And then remember, we're going to hold this one also so that we're not pushing too many keys and kind of avoiding bending the keys. And we can just twist the bell off. Great job today, and welcome to the clarinet.